Power BI Sentinel provides comprehensive management of your Power BI estate, covering disaster recovery, auditing and governance. The setup process is divided into six easy steps. The first two are setting up components in your Azure infrastructure, an Azure storage account and an Azure SQL database. Why are these needed? When Sentinel backs up your reports and datasets, it saves the backups into your own Azure storage account to leave you fully in control of your own data. Sentinel also builds up a rich set of metadata for you, including lineage, documentation, permissions, dataset refresh history, endorsements, and more. And of course, your usage and audit logs. You can view most of this in, in the Sentinel web portal, but the primary method of viewing this is via Power BI reports inside your Power BI tenant. To facilitate this, Sentinel exports all of this information that it gathers into your own Azure SQL database in your tenant. You are then fully in control of your own Power BI management data. All of the setup stages are described on the Setting Up Power BI Sentinel page on our website, powerbisentinel.com, under the Setting Up Power BI Sentinel menu. The Azure Storage account, for example, lists all of the standard details, settings, firewall configurations, and some sample costs for you. And the same for the Azure SQL database down here. Let's go and see what it looks like getting these set up. We now need to create our storage account search for storage, and choose storage account. Click Create, choose the subscription and resource group we selected earlier, and then give it a name and a region, which should be the same as your Power BI region. If you don't know your Power BI region, go to your powerbi.com portal, click on the question mark on the top right, click About Power BI, and it will tell you here your data is stored in your location. We recommend Standard over Premium because it's a backup solution, it doesn't need high performance. With redundancy, we recommend going locally redundancy to save money, but it's up to you. On the Advanced tab, you want to make sure that TLS 1.2 is selected for added security. And importantly, please enable the hierarchical namespaces for Data Lake Storage Gen 2. This means you can then use your same storage account for more enhanced Power BI function at a later date. If we scroll down, we want the access tier to be cool, again to save money. On the networking side, enable public access from selected virtual networks and IP addresses. Power BI Sentinel needs to write to this, and so we'll add all the Sentinel IP addresses in the firewall later. All of the other settings you can leave as they are, so you can now click Review and Create. And then create your storage. Once the deployment's complete, you can go to your storage. And the first thing we need to do is to go down to the networking section down here. We now want to add a number of IP addresses into this firewall. To get those IP addresses, go back to the Setting Up Power BI Sentinel web page. Under the storage account, we need to make a note of these five IP addresses here. If you're in a non-standard data center, then we may recommend you add other IP addresses as well. But as default, these five are the main IP addresses to add. Once you've installed the IP addresses into here, also, select your own IP address here so that you'll be able to access your storage account. You may need to expand this if your organization has a wider range of IP addresses. Click Save at the top. You then need to go to Access Keys on the left-hand side here. Every account has two access keys, Key 1 and Key 2. We recommend, as default, use key 1 for your own internal purposes and key 2 for external third parties. However, it's entirely your choice. Click Show Keys, and you'll be able to use the Copy button here to copy this connection string to your clipboard. Paste that into Notepad for use later on. The second step is to create an Azure SQL database. We'll do that by creating a new resource. and creating Azure SQL. As a single one-off database, we can create a SQL database. Select the subscription resource group we created earlier, and then select a database name. We recommend always creating a new Azure SQL server, as the firewall and security is on the server level, not the database. Choose a server name and a location, and then choose your authentication method. The easiest, most simple option is SQL authentication. Give it an admin username and password. You can enable Azure Active Directory authentication if you want to. That's up to you to manage and set up. 
For the compute and storage, the default vCore option is a very expensive option. We recommend changing this. Click on Configure Database. We recommend changing this to standard DTU based to save money. We recommend a 50 DTU database at 250 gig max size. You can go lower than this if you want to. The performance of your database will degrade, but that's up to you. You can now choose your geo redundancy. Local redundant will be cheaper. Geo redundant gives you more security. And then click review and create. Once created, you can go to your database. The first thing we need to do is look at the actual server itself. So click on Overview, click on the server up in the top, and then we can look at the networking down here in the security settings. This is where we need to add the IP addresses for the firewalls. So first of all, we'll add our own IP address, and then we'll add some more rules here as well. Once we have all five Sentinel IP addresses in, as well as your own corporate address range, you need to allow Azure services and resources to access this server and click Save. You can then click on SQL databases on the left. Choose your database. On the left, you see the connection strings menu. Click on this and we can choose the ADO.NET connection string here. We need to copy that to our clipboard for use later on. Note that the password shown here is a dummy password. You need to edit this and replace it with the actual password that you used when you created the service, including removing the braces here as well. If you enabled Azure Active Directory authentication, you would also see Azure Active Directory connection strings listed down here for you. Now that you have your two Azure components set up, we can plug those into Power Sentinel. To do this, Open a browser and go to portal.powerbisentinel.com and then log in with your Power BI credentials. We recommend doing this with your Power BI administrator account. The first time you ever do this, it'll ask you for consent. This enables the Power BI APIs to be accessed by Power BI Sentinel. It's important to tick the consent on behalf of your organization here so that this only has to be done once. Note that this has to be done by an Office 365 global administrator. If you don't have access yourself, It'll request that a global admin logs in for you at this point to provide that authorization. This is a one-time only setup. Click Accept. That will authorize Sentinel to communicate with your Power BI API, and then you're into Sentinel. If you're an invoiced customer, you'll be able to jump straight into your portal at this point. If you're signing up for the first time with a credit card, then it'll talk you through the setup process. One of the things it'll ask you is which license you need, Enterprise 250, 1000, or 5000. This is how many reports and data sets Sentinel will manage for you, up to 250, up to 1,000, and up to 5,000. If you're not sure how many reports you have, go to your Power BI portal. In the settings, go onto the administrator portal, click on usage metrics, and it'll give you an idea of how many reports and data sets you have here. So for this scenario, we would need an Enterprise 5000 license. The first thing to do in Sentinel is to go to your configure page on the top left here. Enable the use your own storage to store PBIX backups, and then click edit here and paste your Azure connection string into this box. That was the connection string we created earlier uh, from the Azure portal. Then do the same thing for your SQL database connection string and paste the connection string in here, making sure to double check the password's been updated correctly. Once those are in place, scroll down and click Save Changes. If you want to enable the new ABF backups to enable backups of large data sets, incremental refresh data sets, etc., you can enable this inside the preview feature here. Note that ABF backups are a preview feature at the moment in PowerBI.com, therefore they're correspondingly a preview feature in Sentinel. 
Once you've done this, you can then go to your workspace configure screen. This is where you configure which workspaces and datasets you want Sentinel to manage for you. This will list all of your workspaces. There's a few options here. If you want to enable Sentinel to monitor your entire tenants, you can use the global schedule here, choose the include button up here, and Sentinel will then cycle through every workspace, turning it on within Sentinel. This can take some time, so leave this running and come back to it later on once it's finished. Or indeed, you can expand a particular workspace. This will show you all the data sets in this workspace. And again, you can either choose a default inclusion or exclusion on the workspace level, or override it on an individual data set level. For each, you can choose whether you want to back up these data sets daily or weekly. This always happens from midnight. If it's a weekly schedule, it'll happen from midnight on Sunday. Once you've completed the setup, you can go back to your Sentinel homepage and it'll give you a summary of your Sentinel configuration. How many workspaces are enabled and how many are disabled? How many reports in shared and premium workspace are enabled and disabled? So here, for example, we can see one premium workspace is currently disabled. We can click on this to get some detail as to which one it is. It is our sales workspace. Tonight from midnight, Sentinel will run the first backup and lineage scan, and it'll bring all that information into your portal here, as well as exporting it into your own Azure SQL database. To get you started with this database, we have some Power BI templates for you. To get these, go to powerbisentinel.com forward slash resources. The first template here is the usage and audit log, which lists everything that anyone's done in your tenant, from creating, deleting, changing content, viewing reports, viewing apps, etc. It's all logged in there. The second template is for your data lineage, which shows you your data lineage, your data sources, documentation, lists of permissions, endorsements, refresh history, refresh schedules, and far more. Download these templates. When you load them in Power BI Desktop, it'll ask you to plug in your Azure SQL server and database name. You can get those from the connection string from the SQL database we created earlier. You can then deploy those to your Power BI.com environment, set up a refresh schedule every day, and view all your Power BI Sentinel content within Power BI.com. If you want to access your report backups, log into the portal at portal.powerbisentinel.com, click on the report backup menu on the left, and then you can choose your workspace or search and filter it for it there. Expand your workspace. These are all the reports and data sets that exist in that workspace. Choose a data set and it'll list all of the recent backups for you. And from here, you can click Download to download the PBIX to your local PC. There's also tabs here for documentation, which will build you all the documentation in a browser. The same information is exported to your Azure SQL database with data model, DAX, measures, M code, etc. You also have options here to look at change tracking, and column search, data source, lineage, etc.